Hey guys, how's it going? Good to see you. Hey guys, just putting in messages to everybody. Let them know, let's go live. TikTok, let's go live on TikTok. How's it going? Good to see you, Sadie. Oh yeah, it was on TikTok. Hey Gail, how's it going? Hey Lisa Marie. Hey Sandy. Hey Angel. Hey Paige. I like baking too. We got some bread right out of the bread maker today. Thanks for all the hearts and the shares. Thank you, thank you. Let's see, thanks so much for what you're doing. The videos are super helpful. I take my CPC on Wednesday. Yay, best of luck. We've had a dozen people pass this week, so, well, last week, so hopefully you'll be one I can add to our list. Hey, Anita. <clears throat> Hi, Williams. I'm doing great, Gail. How are you doing? Ah, somebody's already trying to answer the question. Finally caught alive. Yay. So glad you're here. So uh, this weekend, I had some free time on my hands, and I've been sharing this book that I bought off of uh, Vitasource. <clears throat> Mean and MK have been loving it, and so I just had a few more questions on here that I haven't gone over during our lives this weekend, and I thought maybe somebody would want to go through them. I'd show you how I would handle these questions <clears throat> if I was taking them. Now, these questions are not AAPC. They are a HEMA which is um, AAPC's counterpart. They are, um, for their certification exam, which is a CCA or CCS, not all of the questions in this book are answered and not all the questions are A, B, C, and D format, but I like showing them off because some of them are quite good and they d cover subjects that are not covered in the AAPC ex practice exams, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So where AAPC might cover adenoids and tonsils, these might cover more of thyroid lobectomies in a different um, area than what AAPC's practice questions do. So I just thought they were fun, and I'll continue to show them and, while I'm working on this. Um and I'm sorry about the internet issues. I hope not. So tag uh, 1972. If you want to sign up to become a medical coder, I recommend AAPC. You can go to their website, aapc.com. You can search up the medical coding certificates. I recommend CPC and CRC. Those two certificates are in demand. And I help you pass the certification exam from the exam point of view. Um, but there's a ton of information there. You can get started there for sure. I'm sorry about it. Keep breaking up, but it's great for me. I don't seem like I have any issue with my internet, but y'all let me know if it's everybody. Angela, how's the live streaming for you? What about you, Gail? Chaos. Is it still, 
Is it glitchy? Let me see if I can uh, see what Wi-Fi I'm on. See if this helps. Lost connection. Let's see. Okay, now I'm on sudden drop. Let's see if that helps. I just switched switched internet. Let's see. <laughs> Well, you messaged me today and let me know. Polite and let you know that I read your message. And yeah, I like chaos. Dude, in case you didn't like it. <clears throat> I was trying to be nice. Hey, go-kart. How are you doing? That is our Grand Prix. That is go-kart. And Shining, how are you doing? Hey, Jess girl, thanks for all the hearts, all the tapping of the screen. I hope I think that lets everybody know that I'm live. Um, so how I would attack this question. I see that A and D have more of a similar or closest answer just numerically. That's all I'm looking at. H40, then we got... 11 versus 10. The 20 might be in the running too, but still I think it's further away from the 11 and the 10. So I'd keep A and D. Then I'd look at this. I know one difference is going to be type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes. So I might not even need to look up any CPT codes, um, which might be even handier. We do have our 70 here. In one of our throwaways, which might lead me to think like somebody else who had already said their answer was D. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. That's without even reading a question. I wouldn't even read the question. I would go analyze this. I would more than likely just pick D and move on with my day. I might verify that the diabetes is correct, whether it's type 1 or type 2. But other than that, I wouldn't worry about much. Yep, we do have type 1 diabetes. We know that's going to be a 10. So I would leave that alone. And just because the 70 is in one of the throwaway and it's repeated in one of the possible two answers yeah I'd pick D so what's going on with this patient they have mild stage open angle glaucoma the right eye and diabetes type 1 what they're doing today is that particular surgery I'm not even going to try to pronounce it I'm already getting tongue-tied on it so we have a choice of answers and we just pick from the choice of answers I'm going to copy this question and add it to my 6,000 practice exam sheet that I have running for when I do um, tutoring one-on-one. -on -one. And then I'm gonna go find the answer and copy it as soon as I can find it. They only answer the odd numbers in this book and they only, they do not give you the answers in the book. You have to go find another document and you have to register on the AHIMA website and download um, a series of zip files for the particular chapter answers, but still they don't answer every single question, only the odd ones. I'm going to post this next one up if we had an, this particular patient I want to see what y'all would think about this particular diagnosis code I'll be right back I gotta go check the front door somebody's at the door
something to write with. I'm at a loss because I can't write on this piece of, on this document. We are going to be in the I-69 area. Let me see if somebody got it right. No one tried. I-69 area. Ooh. Oh, God. My mom just walked in. She needs me. I'll be right back. Did I get mail? John got mail? Everybody got mail? Tell them what kind of tree is that one? What kind of tree is that purple thing? Okay. Oh, okay. Good gracious. She wants to get a tree. The city is giving away trees, and there's a purple one she wants to get. <laughs> Look here. Isn't it pretty? It is a pretty tree. So. I guess Arbor Day is coming up, huh? So she's telling me we got to go on some day to go pick up something. I guess at the library. Okay, good gosh. One thing after another during my live. Y'all know I'm live on Mondays. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, EMK, how's it going? Hey, Meme. Oh, yep, I got the question. Yeah, I had to go sign for a package. I burnt my knuckle trying to cook dinner tonight. It's hurting right now. Jeez. Can you please help me with hospital coding, critical care, and diabetes? Gotta love it. This is, could be for CCS, CCA, and CPC. This question is not very hard for that. Uh, we would be in the I-69-351 area. I do like to find all their ones that are the A, B, C, or D, which are more helpful. So if we were looking at this one, the 83 one that's highlighted right here, we can look down here at the answers and see if we can't see anything that we like. I like how A, C, and D all have the same answer. So they would be in the running. And then we've got two that have the same um, CPT code, which is A and D. What in the world do you want from me no, now, James? Okay, hold your questions till I'm done. <sighs> My child walked in. All we need to know is do we need the 50 multiplier? Is this CPT code bilateral or not? So 369, let me switch around to that. 364 or 3, no, 694. Good gracious. I'm so dyslexic today. 694. Thanks for y'all's patience. Just everything blows up in my house at 630. Okay, 69436, is that a bilateral procedure? Ooh, we got a 
a parenthetical down at the bottom underneath it, which says for bilateral procedure, you need to add your 50 modifier. So we know our answer is probably going to be our A, right? Because they just want to know if we understand that we need to add that. So we got mastectomy bilateral. Sure do. That's the only word we needed to look up from the question to figure out what the answer is. So that is the best way to handle any exam. It, whether you're doing CPC, CRC, COC, CCS, it don't matter. You don't need to read the scenario at all. Don't. Go to the codes. Look for coding similarities. Then find the differences in those coding similarities and only look up what you need to out of the CPT code descriptor, whatever it is. So much easier. And you got less of a chance of getting confused and marking the wrong thing. Plus, you won't have brain fatigue. All I had to do was look at that CPT code, see that it had a parenthetical about 50 underneath it, and I read one word from this scenario, which was bilateral. All the rest of the words are not in my brain. And I can move on to my next question. That will save you from having brain fatigue during the middle of your exam. Let's see what else everybody says. Good job, Mean. G81.91 on that question is so correct. Um, also, let me see. Oops, sorry. Dragons are going off in the background. Okay. We're going down here to neonatal baby babies. Let's pick this question right here. That one right there. So if we have a 22-year-old, that's the one we're going to do right now. Let's look for our coding similarities, right? Do we have anything? We got two fours. That's as close as we're going to get. And I'm talking about the last two digits. So those two are the ones I'd go run and look up the difference on. So let's go look up. And this is a newborn with a heart defect. So three, three, six. I'd run to that code first, see what's going on with that. 336. Three, three, six, four, one, and four, seven. Three, three, six, four, one, and four, seven. So both are repairs. Both are atrial. One of them is ventricle. Um, atrial and ventricle, which is our 47. It does atrial and ventricular, and the other one is atrial secondary. What? I can't read my own writing up there. But let's check out our question. We do have ventricular in there. I see that, and atrial. So I believe D is our answer. What do you guys think? Copy this one, and I'm going to go put it on my cardiology one. Where's cardiology? There it is. And that's our 85. I like that. Many, many, many times with cardiology, all you have to do is figure out if you're atrial or ventricular or both. Ashley started her first coding class today. I hope it goes well. Uh, the lectures are okay. 
All the reading is okay. Don't stress about it all. It's a lot of information. Um, what you need is to save all your practice questions. Anything that you have from your entire course that might be in a multi-choice option answer, copy, paste those down like I'm doing to a Word document and save them throughout the entire course. That will be more helpful than anything uh, once you finish your course. The interviews or the long lectures or the videos, you can play those in the background. Or if you have a lot of reading, if you get the book in PDF, you can have the PDF read it to you. So you can just play it in the background while you're folding clothes, um, doing dishes, whatever. At least listen to everything or read through everything once. But don't stress too hard over the whole course because it's too much to learn all of it um, instantly like that. But learning how to answer the questions is what you need for certification. Chips on top of the chicken that I baked you. Boy. <laughs> I actually cooked and then they're going in there and getting potato chips. Boy, my goodness, those children. All right. Let's see what everybody else got. Their text doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, free practice exam questions are on Quizlet. Q-U-I-Z-L-E-T. Um, just look for A -B -A -A -P -C, C -P -C. There's tons of them that are free out there uh, that people have posted. A little bit of a gray area. I'm sure AAPC doesn't really want you to post them on there, but um, you also have to make sure don't take the answer as gospel like Every once in a while, you put a human in charge of something and they mean to write B, but they put C. Sometimes the answers are wrong. They're not 100% correct, but that's okay. They're still really good for practice. I still refer to them as I go through. And if I find questions that I don't have the answer for, for like this 84, and I know what I think the answer is, but I want to verify. I'll use Quizlet and see if they, somebody else has answered it with the same answer that I have, or I think it is, because it's always better with two heads than one. And um, so it's okay. Just don't get too stressed if something doesn't seem right. It might not be right. But also, I have a free discord server room for you guys and i have every certification that anybody's asked about cpc coc even the cases at the end of the cpc the ccs cca in my discord server we have practice rooms where people can go and do practice questions um and they're all here for free. Now, people will post their own AAPC or other course questions that they're in and they're here. And we'll network and work together and try to find out the answers. Now, just be sure and don't copy and sell these over the internet or post them openly over the internet on like Facebook groups or anything like that. These are copyrighted questions, of course, for people's courses that they've paid for. And I'm sure whoever wrote the course doesn't want you posting their questions out openly with the answers. They don't want you reselling them. So we can, as a group of a study group of people, go into these rooms and practice together, of course, which is perfectly legal just don't openly grab these and, and do anything nefarious. Use these for your own personal use, please, um, and for a group study situation. But my Discord group is super helpful. You can make study buddies. You'll see who all this passed. 
Um, we have job resources, continuing education, anatomy terms, med terms, um, hip picks terms, stuff to do for um, CPT, ICD-10, and what to expect on exam day. Thank you so much for the roses. Those will go for uh, giving somebody free notes of mine. So super handy dandy. Plus you can message me and I'll get to you as soon as I can um, here. And this is all free. So free questions are here on my discord too. So super handy dandy. Plus I show you questions and how I would handle them three nights a week here on TikTok where you can uh, get rid of chat by swiping right or something and then doing screenshots and retype these yourself and practice these at home. But um, just know these are copyrighted by somebody else and we are using them for educational purposes only. I teach for free, so I'm not charging you guys anything at all. Um, so please be, be kind to the authors who wrote these. Um, that's all. Um, but I do teach here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two hours, and then I grab these off TikTok and repost them on YouTube so that you can pause the screens, rewatch them in your free time if you can't be here um, one of those nights. So hopefully that's all helpful. How do you know if the other codes don't use a bilateral modifier with out looking them all up so on this previous one the modifier is listed on every single code and then it's not listed on this one it, the cpt book is pretty good about telling you either in the guidelines before you start coding a section so this would be a guideline for shunting. And if you were supposed to use a bilateral modifier, they would mention it, hopefully, in the guideline before the codes, which will be over here on the next page. And um, in all this guideline, you have to pull it out of here. You see here, they're telling us to use modifier 59. <clears throat> they're telling us to report things separately. Um, I go through the entire book. If it's something that you can um, multiply um, and use um, times one, times two, I add that in these notes for every code. If it's something you can use a modifier for, I'll mark on each code that says that you can use a modifier, you can't use a modifier, that kind of stuff. Um, and that's what my notes are for, but you will learn from these practice exam questions also. We know that our answer for this one does say that we're supposed to use a 50. If by chance that CPT code descriptor for this one does not say that you can use the 50 modifier, well, we now know we can. You can make your own notes next to or underneath that one that says no modifier or yes modifier, that kind of thing. But I do it for you in my own notes, but um, also during my lives, I tell you to add it to those codes, that kind of stuff. So they're pretty good about telling us whether we need a unilateral or bilateral modifier. It's just Sometimes the info might be in the guideline or it might be in the parenthetical underneath the, the CPT code. You just kind of have to look in both. If it's in a guideline, I like to move it out of the guideline and move it to the codes. So that's the best way. And sometimes you have no way of knowing until you bill it and you get a claim back that says, don't use that modifier. <laughs> you just don't know until you utilize it and try to do things like that so we're lucky when we find one that tells us all right okay so we did we did um did we do the patch procedure yes we did we did because that was atrial and ventricular good now we're on the 87 right yeah So 
So for this one, we're just going to look at the answers first. Try not to look at the question. We're looking for similarities. I see that the two Qs are the exact same Q codes, right? Our M codes are one number off. So this makes me lean towards C and D. And then my differences are we have an E and M visit and a procedure code. We can't bill an E and M visit unless we did a medical decision making. So I would just look up here and see if we have an MDM and we do. Since we do have an MDM, which wouldn't happen if it was just a procedure. We would just be fixing the procedure and doing it. Since we do have an MDM, I know that D is going to be my answer because it's the only one with the 99213. Now, this process of elimination or looking for a process of uh, similarities and coding like this is kind of an art, something you're going to need to learn. It's something you won't pick up on the first time you see my life. <clears throat> but you will get it. The more you practice these questions, the more it will come easier and you'll be able to see it. Don't give up on it. It will definitely help you. It's way better than reading all those words, looking up all those answers. You're not going to have time. The CPC exam is going to expect you to answer these in 120 seconds each. And that's a lot. And just getting to all the codes is hard enough. I didn't even need to look up any codes. And I only needed to look in my question for three words. And that's the best, most efficient way to take the exam. And that's what I like to teach, is to teach y'all how to pass the certification exam. Because no matter what they teach you in any of these courses, if it has to do with this CPT book in paper format and indexing stuff, nobody in real world life codes that way anymore at any doctor's offices. It's all done by an EHR. The coding computer will pull out codes that they think should be appropriate for this visit based off what the doctor clicks. Your process will be going through and knowing per health plan and per your doctor's medical group that they've signed contracts with what can be billed and what can't be billed with each CPT code or diagnosis code. And none of that can be taught to you until you get into the medical group and learn firsthand. And that's okay. Don't worry about that. It's to be expected. No one expects you to walk in and not know anything, you know, particular what the courses do for you or what I teach you is the lingo, knowing what MDM means, why it's important, um, that kind of stuff. You need to know your language of this um, medical coding um, career, which will help you once you get into an office and start learning. But coding will be different at every place that you go to. So it's, it's okay as far as that goes. Let's see if I got the right answer. Let me grab this question. I think I'm going to put this one in my muscular skeleton exam. Grab that. And I got to go switch the TV. Travis is grounded from picking out what everybody watches on the TV for not being nice to me yesterday. Put that down and Harry Potter just ended. Now I'm going to put on um, another movie because I'm not letting him have control of the remote control. He loves having control of the remote control. <laughs> I think we're going to put on Beetlejuice next. Beetlejuice. Okay, I've said it twice. I can't say it again. All right. Copy. And paste. And the answer is D. D is correct with that one. Select payers will probably refuse to pay and, and, and uh, let you bill like that, but none of AAPC's questions on their exam or anything are going to be 
true to real life. So this is the question I want y'all to do while I'm going to go switch the TV. Looks like it's a vaccine, right? Synvisc for RSV. This is a, um, a shot. It's a very expensive shot. We used to give, and we probably still do, for preemie newborn babies. It's just I've been working from home since 2013, so it's nothing I have given since then. So that is for RSV. Y'all see if y'all can do the process of elimination and see if you can figure out what the answer is. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Let me check messages. Oh, my God. I got 80 of them. <laughs> oh, Lord. Where to apply for my certificate? AAPC website. Way too much to learn. Not at all, Angela. I can, t Angelica, I can get you to pass the CPC exam, and then you can learn all that stuff when you get time. Hey, Kenza. Jen, so if I pay for prep AAPC exam, can I save in words? We can access it. So if you do one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me, I'm not sure if that's your question. It will do it on a Zoom live, and you can have access to that Zoom live with a loggable link and a password, and you can re-review it all you want. Hmm. Hey, Butter Pecan. Twinkle, you're right. I forgot about the monthly magazine. Good job. Carrie, is it hard to get an entry-level coding position? I don't think so. You, you need to be savvy about the way you're applying for jobs. And I give out all those tutorials on how to do that in my lives. Um, you need to be proactive. You need to... To the medical community is a small community, but it's a big world. So um, we can hurdle that stepping stone when, when we get to it. The first thing I got to get is you passing your CPC certification so that you can have a legitimate registered certificate certification that they can log on to prospective employers and check and verify that you are certified, which is um, super helpful. AAPC is more nationally recognized here in the United States for employers. And um, once you get that, then we'll jump that hurdle about the jobs. Um, there is plenty of medical jobs out there in the career field and remote jobs. Best time absolutely to get into the career is from October to March because every single health plan has to audit every single member's chart for missing data and you as a coder can um, be a HEDIS extractor 
which is a wonderful position to step your foot into, help them out with that audit, and then if they like you and you do a great job, then maybe they'll keep you with the health plan. And they are notorious for hiring remote positions, so love it. Most of the answers on Quizlet are wrong. You find that true, MK? I'm sorry. I hope not. Sometimes I'll find somebody that's reputable, but I'll, I'll go check and verify from one end to the other. But if there's no other option out there. All right. Thank you so much, LaToya, for all the roses. Anybody got a test coming up? We just did a whole bunch of them. Do I have to have, do I have, to have a Facebook for a Discord app, app? No, absolutely not. No Facebook is required. All you need to do is download the Discord app, which has absolutely nothing to do with Facebook. It's not a tracker app either. It doesn't. It's just a nerdy app for gamers. Gamers develop it so that they could post their streaming live stuff. Um, and it's really built by IT people, nerds. So no one tracks you. No one. Um, it won't automatically put in your friends and family and all that stuff. So, yeah. Just need the Discord app from your Play Store. Discord is totally separate. Thanks for helping out and answering all those questions, guys. Kinza, Jen, practice prep exam test on AAPC. Can I review these questions as you suggest save in doc? Yes, if you are in AAPC and you purchased 50 questions from them, after you answer and um, review them, you can absolutely like highlight all the way down is what I like to do. And then I hit control P for print. Then I go to more settings and you see how it's, it's printing with the advertisement on it. So I go to more settings and I switch it to just what I selected. Then that makes it a bigger, bigger exam. Then I can just and then when I hit print, it will ask me where do I want to save it. I'll put it in my documents. I'll say uh, it already halfway words it for you. So I'll put COC, exam, whatever that was, AD, I don't know, whatever it was, and hit save. Then you can just bring it up in your PDF viewer whenever you get a chance. And it'll be there forever. But, you know, you can always have hit the grade on it and answer those. But I like bringing up some of the COC questions because they're just like the CPC questions, but a little bit more difficult. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely safe. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Did I make the, I made the target? Oh, I'm one away. <laughs> thank you for the little hearty thingies, whatever that is. So TikTok will be happy with me. Because they, they like their whatever going on. I'm figuring it all out. Okay. Our practice question right here for immunizations. Let me bring up my immunization quiz real quick so I can put this one with that one. There it is. That's a new immunization quiz. Answer and then our answer. What did you guys get? Because I have not gotten down to everybody's answers yet. Still trying to get through all the questions. Hopefully, you got the answer D. That one is correct for this question. We keep going. If pre op diagnosis and post op diagnosis are different in the case, which one are we supposed to code? Post-op. Where can you buy CPT books? Tag, don't buy anything yet until October. New CPT books are coming out, and I don't expect anybody that is brand new to come into this here in September 
and be able to take their exam by December 31st. There's too much um, auditing of the books that needs to happen page by page. So um, wait till October. New books come out for 2023. You can buy those. And you get the CPT book, which you need, from AMA. And you'll need CPT book 2023. That won't be out till October. The next thing you'll need is an ICD-10 book and a HIPPICS book. You need to get those from the AAPC website, get their version of it, because you'll be at a disadvantage if you happen to be taking the AAPC, CPC, or any one of their certification exams, because their particular ICD-10 and HIPPICS book have more information in them than um, what other vendors like Optum do, and they pick some of their questions directly from their input that they put into those books. So that's helpful. The first thing you should start off with is if you are doing a CPC exam, and that's what you want to be is a CPC when you grow up, you need to get an old version of their study guide. And I don't care if it's a, a 19... Well, I, get, I have a 2019 version study guide. That's perfectly fine. Find you an old version, but it has to be this official one from AAPC. All they do is change the cover every year. Um, right now, I saw one bookstore has one on sale for 40 bucks free shipping. They're normally like 120 bucks brand new but you could save you some money. This first book is all you need. This is better than any course. Um, every page is packed full of information from page one all the way through. Plus it has practice exam questions, which have not changed. My 2019 questions and answers are the same as the 2022 version. Literally, all they're doing is changing the cover. Um, so this has more information in it than any course does, and it has tons of practice questions in it. So this right here, the official study guide, is what you need to start with. Get this, read it all the way through, then in October, you can get your CPT book. Later on in the year, you can get your ICD-10 and hit picks. That's the cheapest and fastest way to pass this course to get done. All right. Um, I, I'm medical coding by Jen on everything. So once you're on Discord, you can message me there at medical coding by Jen there. Yep, you're going to have to pay for your membership. I don't really suggest any classes, Tiffany. It says, where's the best place to go for medical billing classes? I really don't suggest anything other than that study guide. That study guide is 100% everything that you need to know. It's just more than you need to know. It's a wonderful book. It's They did a really good job of really putting a lot of information in it of uh, exactly what you need to do. That's better. I would make PowerPoints out of that study guide and use that as a course if I was actually teaching a course on medical coding. Billing is a different story. Um, billing, if you want to learn only billing, I guess I suggest the AHIMA course for CCS um, or NHA. They have a billing course. But if you just want to be a medical coder, you don't need a course at all. Billing, I don't know. I don't teach billing, like individual, like how do you bill, what what do you fill in to each claim form for each thing. I'm not really interested in teaching billing, but I love teaching coding, medical coding, which um, we do for risk adjustment, medical auditing. That's what I am as a medical auditor. And um, we use it for HEDIS measures, lots of things that we need it for. 
<clears throat> other than billing. Thanks so much. I have been in the medical field since uh, 1991. And I have been using, I mean, medical codes ever since, you know, when, when you're even on the, on the floor seeing patients, I had to get prior off. I had to send clinical information for things. I've been using codes ever since day one. So, um, yeah, 1991, actually, I'm 51 years old. So I have been doing it a long time. I actually won two awards in California, the Bassinger Award for Clinical um, Improvement, twice. And that award is only given out to one medical group out of the entire state of California each year. And I've won it twice for my tiny little medical group. <laughs> I beat out places like Kaiser Permanente and stuff where they have teams of coders. I mean, whole departments of coders, so they hate me. <laughs> anyway, I, I know my coding, but I do not know billing and could care less. I don't want to know billing. Billing just, oh, not my cup of tea. What is MDM? Lord help. I have a TikTok video that I just did recently on that. Um, if you go to my TikTok and you go to ENM, 101 part one right there will explain what ENM is. Then I have um, this one right here, the part two, A, B, and where's C? That's it. A, B, and C. Those three videos, they're not very far back. Those right there will explain what MDM is. Those last four videos. It's also up on YouTube, in case you don't want to see it on TikTok format. I love Beetlejuice, too. Oops, I said it three times. Uh-oh, I'm going to have nightmares tonight, huh? What do you want, Travis? Mm -hmm. What do you want? Mm -hmm. I'm going to flash you if you're going to come in here. What do you want, my love? What do you want? Bored. You're bored. Charging. It's not dead and charging. I charged it up a hundred percent before before I did anything. Yeah, that thing is charged one hundred percent. Try again, my love. You have tons of beads, huh? No. You see what I had to do with the refrigerator? I had to bring it into my bedroom because of you. Not cool. <laughs> Sorry, my child. Oh, Lord. Um, my middle child. Yes, it is an injection. Our Synvisc is an injection. It is. It is a vaccine. Thank you, Balloon Bay, for the roses. Love it. Thank you, Tag, for saying that. Aw, and Kenza, I don't know about that. My child told me I needed to go to Hades this weekend. My sweet baby boy. <laughs> oh, I needed to go back to Hades. My goodness. So I don't know if he thinks I came from heaven, but mm -mm -mm. I hope you are so going to pass the exam, MK. I'm going to make sure of that. My school's responsible for the CPC program. Already knows I got a butterfly. Is it hard to find a job with a CPCA? No. Optum will hire you tomorrow with your CPCA. And the university in Cleveland, Ohio, will hire you before you get your CPC as long as you get your CPC within 90 days of hire date. If you get your CPC on the 94th day, you risk getting fired. So you have to get it within 90 days. They mean it. 
And that's all remote work. So that's even before you pass. So no, it's not hard. You just have to be aggressively independent and and mean it. You got to put it out there in the world that you are getting that job. And I mean, find out what EHR they have before you interview. Just call somebody, ask the front desk receptionist, whatever, anybody that answers the phone, what EHR are you using? Okay, thank you. Click and go Google it. Look up the YouTube videos, know how to, I mean, know what the screens look like. No, tell them, yes, you've used it before. <laughs> whatever, you know how to do it. Just, you got to be aggressive. Yes, I've seen many tutorials on it. It was part of my class. Whatever you got to say, you got to be proactive on it for sure. Don't say, I don't know, or blah, blah, blah. I don't provide a name, but complicated about their bad instruction. Now they're working on getting me, oh my, to repass for free. I've had some teachers tell MK, I mean, I mean, I have had some stories where students are told awful things and they're not helped and you pay a thousand, two thousand dollars for their course and for them to teach you and they do not help you learn specifically when you ask for help. I, 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 no. I don't have no words for it. I have no words for that. That's not a teacher. That's not a teacher. That's not not the epitome of, I mean, your parents are teachers. Your grandparents are teachers. Your community people are teachers. Everybody's a teacher you run into. Even the person running the cash register at, at the store for Travis is always telling him, you know, something uh, she sees him coming and she says, how are you today? Were you good? What happened today at school? And if he had an issue with something, she's giving him advice. Everybody in your community should be teaching just like that. I mean, they let him bag sometimes the groceries. They tell him what he's doing right or wrong with it. I mean, life is full of teachers and, it, and everybody should be empowered by that and, and, and love doing it. I just think. If somebody comes to you for help and they you paid for it and they just tell you, go read the guidelines or don't worry about it. You're not going to be a coder anyway. What? How could they be so callous? I don't know. I don't understand. And I full heartedly agree that some of those courses are blatantly unhelpful. And I don't know if it's blind neglect or indifference or intentional neglect that they're not helpful i don't know some of them are wonderful and do help people and many many people um i do wish there was more free education out there though there should be is as expensive as all this is and the memberships and the retakes and and the books and all this stuff that is unnecessary because you don't code that way in real life. There should be more opportunities for free, uh, free education somewhere for any of this. But anyway, get off my high horse and teach some myself. Currently in an AAPC online course finishes in December. Awesome, Carrie. You copy every single one of your... A, B, C, D, multiple choice questions from every single practice exam from chart from chapter one all the way through all your reviews, all your chapter e reviews. And when you take that final exam, the last one that they don't let you have a copy of, like you can't go to your grades and see what the questions were, do a screen record or have your cell phone up recording you as you take the exam it might be you know two hours long whatever whatever it is that way you have the questions so that you can stop and pause the screen and you can add those notes to your cpt book um as you go at least with the ones that you got correct the ones that you got wrong you could 
screen record and crop it and post it into our Discord and ask somebody what the question is. And I guarantee you somebody's got an answer for you. Night or day in that place. There's always somebody on that can help you find the answer. You can't retake that last final test, but at least you've got the questions. And if you had every single practice question noted and highlighted in your book of how they coded it and what they wanted the answer to be and some of the key words from each question written down, you'd have an entire course of practice questions listed here that could be so invaluable when you do take your um, final exam. So anybody that's taken the AAPC course, you copy every single one of those questions. Post it in a Word document or print a PDF, whatever you got to do, and save them and make notes. Super handy dandy. Okay. Let's see what's going on with this pregnancy. We've got a 93. So if they're pregnant, you know we're going to start out with an O code. So I love A and B right away. If they are pregnant, we do have to denote whether they're, which gestational weeks they're at. And then we need to know, are we billing something that's part of a global package or do we need to bar code a CPT code? I know the answer to this one because I've done OB and delivery. That was my speciality. I've delivered babies on my own and done all kinds of procedures on my own. <clears throat> um, vasectomies, copos, leaps, anything like that. I've done them all. Um, so I know the answer to this one without looking up the CPT code and not even looking at the question. But without that knowledge, you just need to know in your OB and delivery, when you're delivering babies, do you know if your cyclage is included? And what a cyclage is, is during pregnancy and usually around 15 weeks, if a patient has had previous miscarriage where the baby spontaneously delivers around that time, then the next time they get pregnant, we'll go in and literally put stitches into the bottom of the uterus at the opening and stitch that thing up with some thick horse hair <laughs> and put stitches in there and stitch it up and tie it up tight until they're 38 weeks pregnant and then we'll take it out and then they can deliver safely on their own whenever they get ready to. Um, but that's what that is, is a cerclage. So, you know, just so you know. But if you don't know the definition of that word and what kind of procedure that is, that's one to add into your CPT books. But would we include that in a global package or would we need to bill for that procedure? And C and D definitely would not be the answer for that one. Let me go open up my OB delivery one. See if y'all can guess the correct answer on that one. Unfortunately, we don't know that they need a cerclage until they've already had a miscarriage before. And it's a specific type of miscarriage where the, the sac and everything all at once, placenta all at once, just spontaneously. It's not active labor thing. They don't go into labor with it usually. Currently carries in, yep. How long is the course? Usually the courses are self-paced. You have a year to finish the course. Some people can do it in 12 weeks. Some people can do it in a year and a half. They just pay for an extension. So it depends on you. Some Gia is taking her exam online, exam H, meaning this is her second try. Yes, it is on nine three. That's awesome. I and it, I think it's better now that you knew what was on the exam. Now that you've taken it the first time, at least you've got a heads up of what to expect now. Um, 
Some people are reporting, which I have not said yet, that you cannot go back and forth to the previous questions. Now, when I took my CPC exam online, I was able to circle back to questions. I answered them, but then, you know, I get to thinking, and as I move through the exam, I'm like, I want to go back to that previous question, number three, and number 14, they were killing me. Like, I want to go back and look at that and see if I can't find the answer. And I could go back. There was a bottom arrow key at the very bottom of the questions where I could go backwards and forwards. If you can't see it, you might want to make sure your zoom in and zoom out um, is the right percentile, that thing. Um, you want to make sure you can see the full screen, like maybe keep your zoom in and zoom out at 90% instead of 100%, because sometimes if you have the full screen, you can't see all the options, but that might help with that. Then again, they may have gotten rid of that option. I know with CCS and CCA, if you, you have to take your exam in person, but the exam is taken on a computer. And they give you one question at a time, you answer it and move on, and you cannot go back to the previous question. I've had a, a student recently who took the exam online, her exam part one. She skipped a couple of questions thinking that she could go back and answer those later, and you can't. And she couldn't find it. She couldn't find her arrow back button, and it. she didn't know how to get there, so... I also had a running number at the top where it was question one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, all the way to 50. And I could actually click on that number at the top and get back to the instant question that I was at. So I don't know. They may have changed the exam since the last time I took it. Who knows? Um, but be wary about that now. I don't know. One option I think it might be is a Zoom issue, but I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Kenzo, are you truly an angel? Oh, no, I'm not an angel. Not an angel. Thank you for the roses. Y'all are so awesome. Yes, take the snap tool and snap them. Yep. Control print. You can also do your control print key and snap those questions or just run a an extra cell phone and have the camera videotape in the screen the whole time uh, let's see I have 72 messages there's no way I'm gonna get to all of these guys I'm sorry I've got to get down here to the bottom so I can at least see what um, you guys are saying currently Cleveland, Ohio. You know it. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, most of the questions can be Googled. Yep, they can. And when you're taking the course, don't forget, <clears throat> when you're in the course and you take one of your exams, like Chapter 1 Review, you can copy and paste and save the entire questions. And then when you take your retake, you can split your screen like this and bring up the previous questions that you had on the other one. Like if you didn't make a 70 and you got to retake it, they'll use those questions again. Then you can just go control F. And if you retake your exam over here on this side, then you can go, um, immunization, and then bring up the question, because they'll be out of order, and then bring up the previous exam, and if you got it right, you know what the answer is on this one. There'll be about 25% new questions, but at least you've got all these answered, and you've got an idea of what those are, and you could look up what the answers are on the ones you got wrong and make notes on that, because you can add to your PDF draw Use your draw tool and draw in the right answer. Then you've got 100% of all the previous first chapter's exam in front of you. And you can do some word searches while you're taking the second try. 
and then you can at least get it to where you can pass and move on to the next chapter and then save both those exams. Then you've got two sets of questions for chapter two, plus the quizzes, plus the end chapter review questions. So anyway, it's cool. It's good if you do fail the first attempt at the chapter review, because then you get new questions for the chapter. <laughs> Love it. Anyway, just saying. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What am I doing now? I doing? Have I already done? I, I didn't mean to do that. Let's get back down here to our 695, where we were at. Somewhere around in here. 695. If I didn't answer your question, just ask it again. If, if you still need it, if somebody didn't answer it for me. Another OB one down here. <clears throat> So this one has the first code is either a 3-4 or a 3-9. They all have the same middle code, which is cool. And then we have a difference between our 8-12 and our 8-20. So the first thing we got to figure out is, are we either one of those? Hold on, let me see what Twinkle's saying to me. What do I need to do? Huh? I think we should have questions Monday because it delays practice questions on others. Practice questions on Wednesdays teach a Friday section. Uh, Twinkle? Huh? <laughs> At this particular second, I can't understand what you wrote in text, but um, yeah. I'm blonde sometimes, but then again, I'm in the middle of a live and can't comprehend anything other than what I'm doing at this particular second. So I might need some cliff notes is what I'm saying. Let me switch over to ICD-10 and let me look up the difference between the 3-4 and the 3-9. Let me see. I'm sure it's a really great answer. It's something to do with coordinating our Monday, Wednesday, and Friday sessions probably in a better format and I, I get that but I don't know the particulars okay three four so what is the difference between our three zero zero I'll eventually get there. Look at all my OB notes. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere. <laughs> I love my notes. All right. Three, four. Three point four is incomplete, spontaneous, without complications. Then we've got our three, nine. is unspecified without complications. Are we going to use an unspecified code when we have a specified code? Probably not. So I would leave the nines off and would just use our B and C. Then it's just a difference between two CPT codes or one CPT code. I'm more inclined to think that it's just one but let's go look. Let's see. What is our differences? This is OB. I don't think our 581 is OB related, actually. Is it? I know if we're early in the 5 section that they have something that is non-OB. And yep, I'm right. See, the 581 is not OB related. So if this is pregnancy related, we ain't doing that one. I know our, all of our OB stuff like that is in the nines because it's all over here with the labor and delivery babies. So just knowing a little bit of that helps out that all of the five nines are OB. 
5 eighths or non-OB. So that's super helpful. So that tells me right away that B is my answer. With the two codes, which is unusual. Usually it's just one code for AAPC. But again, this is he a HEMA questions. And I've never seen them before until I found this book. But this is cool. Let me grab the answers as I put these questions in with my practice exam questions that I like to use. And yep, they're saying B is the correct answer. And that's all I'm getting is B is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> can we write notes if you are taking the AAPC CPC exam in the United States even if you're doing it online but you're in the United States absolutely I had one person write on the cover of the book and um, the proctor on the online exam kind of questioned it, but she had written over the top of the uh, black print right here, which confused the proctor and AAPC let it ride. But any available white space. So I might underline their print, but I'm not writing over the top of it. Anything that is white available space, I write on it everywhere in the book. Anywhere I want, anywhere I want to write info, it's there. I highlight and make notes on all kinds of stuff that is super important. But the one thing that I'm consistent about is I make sure that it is on available white space. I don't white write on the copyrighted words. But you can write on anything that doesn't have a word on it. Absolutely. 100%. Whatever you want to do. Plus, they even have full pages where you can write notes that are even noted to be note pages. Somewhere. They used to have one between ENM and anesthesia. They got rid of that sucker. But yeah, I totally reinforce writing notes. Maybe it's in between. Remember last year we had that big full page of notes right after ENM? We've got one here after anesthesia. But yeah, you absolutely write on anything you want. They're your books. You're going to spend. and use them all you want. Sorry, when I put my camera back up in my stand, Bixby likes to take over because I use an Android. Why is my phone going off so much? Notes from other sources, I mean. What kind of other sources would you want to write in there? I would only write something that is pertinent to the certification that you're trying to get. If you are trying to get a CCS, a HEMA stuff, I would keep it down to just a HEMA stuff in there. Now, when I do my anatomy, you know, I go look at all the anatomy questions or the, all the anatomy pictures, I mean. So I put outside source information here. I'll Google uh, female genitalia system, and then I'll write functions, and then I'll Google what does this part do for the body. What does that part do? And this is outside information. I mean, it might be in the study guide too, but I just Google it because it's easier to look up on Google so I do that that's helpful and that's outside information
I meant notes. We printed cheat sheets to hide in coding books for exams. No. I mean, you can write anything you want. Um, you can write anything you want, but you have to hand write it. You can't insert additional pages. Um, let me go to coding. Hold on. Oh, where's my coding thing? Pictures. Coding. Some people get all crazy and use those pages for all kinds of notes. Now, I could never read something like that during an exam. I have to color code things. But some people write an awful lot of cheat sheet notes, I guess. But you have to hand write them in there. You have to be able to find it. You have to be able to know where it is and be able to find the information. Some people write off a lot of stuff in, inside their books. You can write whatever you want to write. I just recommend that you write something that is legible, something that you understand and know exactly where it is when that subject comes up, and you're able to go find it really quickly. But, yeah, you know, these are copies of other people's notes, not mine. They posted freely over the Internet on the AAPC website. You can write whatever you want. They're your books. I just don't know how helpful it'll be if it's not near the codes. Look at that mess. I couldn't find anything in that mess, but you are more than welcome to write whatever you want. Now, this flip-out cover on the back of the CPT book, you can't write over the advertisements that they have here. Um, you'd have to just write in the white available spaces, if there is any. You can add to the abbreviations there, which is handy. But um, you can write whatever you want. I recommend keeping most of your notes in the CPT book because that's the book you're going to be in for the exam 90% of the time. You only have five questions in hit picks, maybe more, 10 for compliance because the compliance questions are back there. You're going to have five questions in the ICD-10 book, and that's it. If you fill up the ICD-10 book with a bunch of CPT notes, you're going to forget it's there. I did that during my exam. And because you're going to be in CPT the whole time, you only have 120 seconds to find the answer to every single question. It is going to go by incredibly fast. Four hours will be blown so fast. So whatever you write, I recommend keeping it all in, in CPT. Unless it's the top 10 ICD-10 guidelines that I want you to write in. And then hit picks, we have some compliance questions, and then just the regular hit picks notes. <laughs> Jay Z, <laughs> y'all see that dog? Oh my gosh, there's this guy saying uh, something about Tupac is and daddy's in my dog right now. He's sitting in the front seat just jamming away. It's so cute. I just love it. So now I'm just obsessed with this dog. He's so cute. <laughs> he was so adorable. Yeah, I misread questions. I... I, um, so if you keep asking questions and I'm interpreting them wrong, that's just me. It's what I do. So keep asking. <laughs> the 99 problems, one ain't them. <laughs> Top 10 guidelines. Yes, you know you're going to get a burn question during the CPC exam. You need to know your guideline for that. You know you're going to get a guideline for or a question about adverse reactions. Um, medication errors, underdosing, overdosing, you know you're going to get one there. You know you're going to get an OB question. You better know your guidelines about coding OB. You know you're going to get a sepsis question. You know you're going to get 
uh, an ulceration, diabetic ulcer, foot ulceration. You're going to need to know your guidelines for coding that. And HIV, symptomatic, non-symptomatic, that kind of thing. You're also going to get cancer. Uh, anemia with cancer versus um, dehydration with cancer. They're coded differently. Do you know the difference? That kind of stuff. Those kind of guidelines are you going to know, need to know. I have that list up on the document that I made of what's been on the exam in the last 45 days that we have up for sale on my website. And that top 10 list is there along with what codes were on the exam for the last 45 days um, that people tell me that I need to update now. As a matter of fact, I got three people who told me what was on their exam this week that I need to bring up. Let's see. Where is that document? File. Because if I don't open it and put it on my desktop, then I'll get busy doing something else and not update it. Document. I got so many of them. What has been on the exam? Last time I updated it was not 726, was it? <sighs> 726. Okay. So this is the document. We have it up for sale. Um, it's just handwritten notes of from me and from everybody else. But I got some vocabulary. If I happen to have a practice exam question, like people were telling me last night during the live of what was on their exam. Look at my Sammy Sammy. He was so cute today. Anyway, um, I, I have some, these, every single one of these questions, somebody told me was a question that was on their CPC exam this weekend. So I need to post those up on this document. And then I have to go through like, if I got to go to this other desktop, this desktop, and then I go here to messages, somebody told me what was on the exam, I believe, in my inbox is here. No, she bought it. Where did she buy it? She bought it on Etsy. Okay. Here. So I just have to find the messages that people tell me and then copy-paste them into that document. I have some, I think, in Google, too. Hmm. <sighs> Jocelyn, I gotta send her that document. She, somebody on Discord said, I don't have a problem except they're 2018. I just didn't trust. Oh, yeah. Somebody's handing out practice exam questions. There's somebody that sent me what was on the exam recently. So I just have to organize and figure out where all these answers are. Oh yeah, it's going to be before that. Am I open on Labor Day? You know it. Let's see. Here, uh, da, 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 da. Delivery not available, of course. I hate it when I have the wrong email addresses for people because that's unhelpful. Anyway, I know somebody sent me an email. I just have to figure out which email address and get it posted, get it on there. That just takes me 
because it all gets sent. Some of it gets sent on, some of it gets sent on Etsy. Some of it gets sent on Discord. Some of it gets sent on email. Some of it gets sent on chat and messenger. So I just have to find it all. But this is the last update with 726. And it's 54 pages long. Oh, my Lord. And I'm fixing to add to it as soon as I find everything that somebody told me. I know three people have told me what was on their exam this weekend. Grand Prix is go-kart, I think. Yeah, she's using her husband's oops, it, um, account, I think, or something like that. Yeah. I just have to find it all. I know it's around here somewhere. <laughs> it's just everywhere. I've got it everywhere. How is she doing? 70, 68 per question. I have got all 500 questions. Do I keep going through? And make notes. Getting through them. Somebody's sending me all their practice exam questions from uh, that they finally got through all of them. They're redoing them all. I like this 99 one. Let's see about that one. Let's see if we can't do this one. So we've got either the 94 or the 99 again. Remember our 99 or the 39 is the non-specific one. Remember we just did this code. So we know it's only going to be A or D because the 3.9 is non-specific. So then we just need to know, are we a 9812 or a 9820? What's our difference? Before you go to the question, let's look up our difference. 59820, 59820, and, and then our 12. Okay. And if you don't have this line, be sure and have this drawn. You need this red line between nine nine, sorry, five nine eight three zero and five nine eight four zero. Everything below this line is Doctor Dunn. Means the doctor had to induce and does the procedure. Everything above this line is spontaneous meaning it happened naturally. And that's the first thing on all these questions. When you have a, a an AB, I just can't say these things on Tiki Talk. So you want to make sure you find out, are we natural causes, spontaneous, or are we induced for medical reasons done by a doctor? Anyway, so we've got a difference between 12 and 20, and they're both spontaneous. So unfortunately, that doesn't help with this one. But if it was 20, we would be first trimester completed surgically, and then they're both completed surgically. Yep, 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 yep. So let's see what our difference is in our question real quick. Are we a 20 or are we a 12? I bet more than likely it's the smaller of the number. We don't bill higher because the, it's a more involved procedure. The higher we go up in the CPT code descriptor, I'd be leaning towards D. But let's see if we can figure out our difference. We're still in OB. Nope, wrong one. I need to have 
my 5,000 up. Paste that one. So what did we do to our patient? What we did was ultrasound. We did dilation correct of an incomplete spontaneous and vaginal vault. Are we an incomplete or are we a missed? That's our difference. Are we missed or incomplete? And since we have incomplete written in our descriptor right there, I would stay with the incomplete right there. What do you guys think? This was on the a APC two. Can I ask you about the text of codes 14 and 15? I don't understand them. 14 and 15 should have two different separate headers in Intigmatary. So 14s are, is that the adjacent tissue transfer? Those codes are done if it's 301 301 yeah that's adjacent tissue transfer those are only coded by themselves they include an incision with them um you're gonna it's also called a z-plasty and that does an excision and we get to remove tissue from another area and repair that area where we removed it the 15 to 15 271, two. 271 is a substitute skin graft. So we are applying a substitute graft um, on a wound surface without doing an adjacent tissue transfer, which are different. I like the biological, <laughs> biological implant, um, meaning plant-based or something like that is crazy. So the adjacent tissue transfer is, think about it, it's real skin from your own body, right? And then if you're over there in the 1500s, you're doing biological implant. That means it's, you know, not of your body. It's synthetic. It's a biosynthetic. It can be made from pig skins to snake skins, literally fish scales, um, some sort of synthetic material, plastic, whatever, um, or even a permanent coverage for open skin. So, but it's still a skin substitute, like a replica of skin, but not, not true real skin. So that's totally the differences there. For sure. And yes, we are going to stay with our D for this answer. I did go look up this one and yep, it just says correct answer. It's not giving us much info, but yes, that one is D. All right, let's see this 101 for respiratory. Let's see. We have... Two J's 
and two R's. The two J's are good. Would we use an R code, which is symptoms? Doubt it. I bet it's going to be the J. So then we've got the 66 in both. Yep, and then we just need to know, can we add that code with it or not? If it's an add-on code and we have enough tissue or whatever, then yes. So I'd run to 32666 to see what's going on with that code. And you always want to go to the first code. You don't want to go to the secondary code because whatever's there, I'm sure they did. But to find the rule, whether you can use it or not, will always be on the first code. So 32666. Ooh, unlucky number. 32666. All right, that's a child code. So no matter what, I want to make sure. I'm going to go to my mama code. I'm going to go look at her and see what she's doing. That's a thoracotomy. So that's our 650 surgical, mechanical, or chemical. Doesn't matter. And then our 666 is unilateral. And then it's a wedge, which is great. And then if we were going to add anything else, the 67, it would have to have an additional resection ipso lateral i p s i lateral means same side and see we got the word resection in here and we do have a wedge so i think we need both i would pick d copy this and put this under respiratory Right there. Respiratory. And we go find the answer. Let's see. They are saying A is incorrect. So is B. So is C. And D is correct. Inner voice. <laughs> Inner voices are killer, aren't they? Sometimes. All right. I like this 05. It's got tons of codes with it. So let's see. If we were doing 05 or the 20, 20 yeah, 105, we are going to be going, I like the two fives. Those are the exact same. Then we've got three six in this one, three six in that one, which is handy dandy. Two eight is not anywhere. Nine one is crazy. Okay, let me just go see what these codes are. So I'm going to go to my three one six two eight. And 31636. Three, see what my differences are? See if I can find my answer that way. 31628. 31628. 31628. It's a child code, so I'm going to go look for mom. To, just to make sure I'm underneath the right header 
We're in our brachoscopial rigid or flexible with fluoroscope. We're also doing cell washing. Well, if we were doing mama, where's my semicolon? Where's my semicolon? Do they have one? They do. Okay. So cell washing is not included. The mama has only the guidance in it and it's a flex flexible or um, rigid. So bronchial scope. And then if I was doing two eight, it includes biopsy. And then if I was doing three six, three six is a stent. So all I got to do is look at if I'm doing, there's our bronchoscope with biopsy. Did we do any stents? We did. The good stents are there too. So that means we did both, right? That and that which means C is the correct answer because it has both of them in it. Ooh, very cool. I like that one. At least I like C anyway. What do you guys think? Let's see if I copy that. And then go find the answer, 105, copy, paste, and then A, B are on one page, and then I have to go to another page to find C and D. Yes, C is correct. Yay. C is correct for this one. Thank you for the hearts. Amy, do you see why it's not um, D? <laughs> She's Twinkle on our Discord too. And you might get email replies back from her. She helps me out answering emails. All right, 107. Let's see about that one. If I was doing this one, I like the two five ones, right? I just need to know, can I add a 60 or a 61 to it? So let's go see what three two five five one is. Three two five five one. That is a mama code, so I don't have to go any further. It is a tube thorectomy drainage system which is great it does not have any do nots so what's our three two five six oh our six oh is installation of a catheter and then our six one is a chest tube chest tube chest tube chest tube are we doing fibrolis or are we doing pneumo Plural, plurindices, plural, plural. Are we plural? We're plural. We're plural. We just have to look up our spaces. The P word in 60 is the most important one. And then in our 61, the most important word, it starts with the F. F-I-B-R-I-N-O. Those two words are your differences. So you just had to look up to see if you were plural or the F word. So A, I would go with A with that one question
and A is our correct answer for this one. Advanced coding exercises. Oh my. I don't think these are going to be helpful. I think I have to skip this chapter because maybe not. Some of them might be more. Oh, these look fine. Oh Lord. See, they get that. PCS coding crap. You see why I don't want to do billing? Look at that nightmare. Uh-uh. I don't want to do none of that. I've learned enough. But yeah, we, we, we don't want to go here. <laughs> we don't want to go there. But let me go, I think, chapter... What chapter is this one? What chapter is this? That's chapter 7 still. We need to get out of chapter seven. If we get to chapter eight, we'll be good. Chapter eight has some good stuff in it, I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah, chapter eight will be good. That was another sickle cell. We've already done sickle cell. What's this one? we already do we may have already done chapter eight i have to remember i need m mean to tell me whether we did this one or not we got uti dehydration pleural infusion thrombocenia my i used to babysit a girl had that she got her spleen taken out it was on steroids and diabetes type one i don't think so huh so how many diagnoses do we have? One, two, three, four, five, depending on whether dehydration was a cause of, it might be just a symptom. You got to be careful with that one. Five, one, two, three, four, five. So some of them have six or seven diagnosis codes. Probably get rid of the ones that have the R's in them. Knowing that. So I would like just the ones that do the five. So either C or A. And then what's our differences? Our difference is only the D code, right? So are we D6959 or D6949? Both numbers are in our throwaway, so that's not going to be helpful this time. I have to go to my diagnosis code book. And see. So D69, D, A, B, C, D, D69, 4, 9, D69, 4, 9 is other primary thumb row, other. So that's the 4, 9 is other. Don't really like that. What's our 5, 9? But it's going to be for this 5, 9. 5-9 is other secondary, so we need to know if it's primary or secondary, and it's primary. So actually, it is our C, right? Because it is primary. Yep, C. Did you get that mean? You did get that. Good job. Look at that huge note. Oof, I have to cut that down some, but good job. You see how I like to count just how many diagnoses do you need? Get rid of the answers that have too many. 
and then narrow it down by just those two, what's the one code difference between the two answers? And it just ended up being a 5-9 and a 4-9. Then go look and see what that difference is. And whatever that difference is, you just search your question for it. And it ended up being only one word difference, that right there. It was either primary or secondary. And that's all you needed to look up in that huge question. That's it. You didn't need to read none of the rest of that mess. I promise this system works. It just takes practice to get used to it and to learn it and be able to actually do it because it seems very foreign to be able to do it like this. But it works. It's the most efficient way. I did not want to learn coding, and I just wanted to pass the exam, and that's how I did it. I didn't want to learn more than I already know. Well, I definitely don't want to learn how to bill. That's for sure. Billing just seems so tedious. Oh my. <laughs> I'm sorry, chaos. I know it's crazy and I'm going really fast. I'm trying to um, keep mean and some of the more advanced students um, engaged and get them some extra practice questions in. And, and that's hard on people that are beginners because y'all get kind of lost in the shuffle here. You'll catch up. Don't worry. You'll get this good as time goes by. Just keep hanging in there. So we'll try this 05. One right here. So if we were just looking at symptoms, right? It probably won't start off with an R, right? Whatever we're doing, if we have real diagnoses, we're going to use them. So I'd be leery of the A. And we know that symptoms are start with R is because if you go to any page in this ICD-10 book and you look at anything that has the word R or the letter R starting with it, the side bar right here will tell you it's signs and symptoms. And we don't generally use those as a diagnosis if we have a diagnosis. It's probably going to be a difference between the two M's because that answer is the same. And then we have two throwaways. And then out of our M's, we have one that has a symptom and one that has an I diagnosis. What does our I, what a, eyes are circulatory system. So anything with an I in front of the diagnosis code number is circulatory. So still keeping with my initial thought that R's don't need to be involved in anything that we're billing, if at all possible, since I've already narrowed it down to B and D, just because they're the same first diagnosis, I wouldn't follow it up with a symptom diagnosis. I would use a real diagnosis for circulatory issues, so I know my answer is going to be D. That's a crazy concept to think about, where I did not even look at one word of the question and just ration out what I could bill or wouldn't be billing. But just knowing that one little thing about symptoms is so helpful because that'll get rid of two answers. You already have two answers that start out with the same. So if you've already picked out those two things, then you just continue to get rid of the symptoms. You can pick out your answer is simply just D. I'm going to put this underneath my medicine workshop, whatever it is. I'll go check my answer and go find the answer real quick and make sure I'm right. But I'm batting a thousand tonight. Sometimes I get them wrong. Where am I at? 90, 905? 805, 805. 
I see D is the correct answer. It says nothing in particular. It just says it's crap about indexing. But D was correct. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you, Twinkle. Let's do one more question and then we'll end it up for tonight. So hypertension, something in the hypertension area because we're in the I-25s, right? So we're going to look at this. We've got a difference between one diagnosis, um, two diagnoses, Yep, and the rest of them. So we're probably not going to have just one. We're probably going to have two diagnoses. Probably a difference between the two Zs, right? So A and C is what I would be leaning towards. What's my difference between A and C? Two CPT codes versus one. It's probably just the one. Since it's in one of my throwaways too, Heck yeah, I'd pick A and move on to my next question. But our post-operative diagnosis is, oh, angina. But we had to do some graphs and an ASHD for coronary angiographs. We had to do an angio. She had to have her rotor rooter done. And let's go find the ants. So what was her post-operative diagnosis? Yeah, she's going to have two. And then what procedure did we do? Right and left, cath, R, angio. That's it. Yeah, one CPT code. Yep, 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 yep. Let's go find the answer. So they're separated by two pages. Such a pain. A is correct. What are they saying? The reason why they're saying patient has a history of a cabbage. The main term is presence sub coronary arterial bypass graft. Gave her a ton of heparin. Good gracious. We did left ventricular. Left ventricular. Love it. Right coronary artery. Both allograph veins. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, it is a perfect. Good job, Mean. All right, guys. I hope this is helpful. There is a ton of free info. Please, please download the um, and join the Discord app. There's even a room there. If you don't know how to use Discord, find the room that says Discord Tips. Scroll all the way to the top. The very first video that's put there is how to use Discord. So then you know how to navigate Discord. But there's nothing nefarious there. Nobody's going to track you or anything like that. Um, and you can just lurk. You don't have to engage. But it's full of free resources for you guys. Um, plus you can message me there. And we can share info there. You can find the link to get to that page on my website if you go to medicalcodingbygen.com. 
go to the social media tab. Just find the one that says social media tab and scroll down. You get to see the YouTube page. This is the one that says join Discord. Just click that after you've already downloaded the Discord app and it'll throw you right into the Discord app. It's all free. All my YouTube videos are there and the Facebook chat. All that stuff is there too, but Hopefully this is helpful, guys. I'll repost this up on YouTube. I will be working on what has been on the exam in the last 45 days as soon as I get off of here. Bringing it up now. Because i got to go find everybody's info. Somebody sent me, I know three different people sent me info this week. So I've got to go find that and add that to the bottom. And then I'll get that re-emailed out to everybody that purchased it. And if you do purchase this document, whether you get it on Etsy or on my website, on my website, it's a little bit cheaper because you don't have to pay for Etsy fees, but um, please put in a real email address because I don't want to have to manually enter in and send everybody uh, their own private email address and attach a, a document to it. It slows me down a whole lot to send it out to a lot of people. So if you... Do purchase it. Give me a, a valid email address so I can always send you the updates. I'll send it every time I update it to your email. I don't spam you or anything or you know, send you a bunch of info y'all don't need. So hopefully that was helpful, guys. Thank you so much for helping out the TikTok with all the hearts, all the the lovey things, making me do the, the target thing. That's so great. 8,000 likes, five shares. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. I follow everybody that is the top 10 viewers. If you're here for two hours watching me, I try to follow you. If you have an open account, and I can. So then you can message me there, too. But I'm really slow at getting at TikTok messages. I'm figuring it out, though. I've been trying to figure it out anyway. <laughs> Say hi to Travis. Oh, he's still in trouble. Little man. My little man. I got a call from the science teacher on both of them today, but they're okay. Minor little things. James likes to make whale noises <laughs> in class. He needs to just stop on his little being silliness. And then uh, Travi was having some, he's doing all of these assignments, but getting zeros for him. And it's totally not like him. It's a video where you watch a video and then you answer questions while you're watching the video and it must be confusing him because he's getting the wrong answers and getting zeros. I'm like, can we slow this down? Or can he have cliff notes or something? What's going on? I don't know. He's not paying attention or can't comprehend what's going on or doesn't know how to answer them. Because he would get them right if he knew what to do. He's very particular about his work. He wants to do it right. He won't even let me help with his homework. So anyway, that's all. We were having good conversations today. I will be back and we will do another two hours on Wednesday, 6.30 Arizona time zone. It's 8.43 here now. I don't know when the time falls back, but hopefully we will be closer in time zones pretty soon. <laughs> 10K? Yay, we did it. Y'all are awesome. Thanks, Red. That's awesome. I miss Travis's drawings, too. Y'all, he's so good. He's so good at it. Right now he's in there playing Oculus. I can hear him screaming at everybody. Sammy's waiting for me. What are you waiting on me for, little man? I'm trying to get the phone to... Here we go, Sammy, Sam, Sam. What are you waiting on me for? He's usually never in here. Look, as soon as I get up, he's going to walk me to where he wants me to do. I think i got to wash his water bowl dish. Is it time to wash your water bowl? Is that what you want me to do? There's Travi. He's on the Oculus. <laughs> Being all crazy. And then I got my Jaybird. He's playing some slasher game, really, with a knife. Huh? You know that ain't appropriate. Oh, my gosh. Look, he got rid of it for a gun. Okay, that makes it all better. Really? Really? 
I make them have all their electronics in the living room so my mom can help me watch them. Um, they're not allowed to take electronics to their bedroom. So she's working on a puzzle here, trying to put it together. I think it's this one with all the candy bars on it. Oh my gosh. So that's it. That's life. Sammy wants something. I don't know what you could possibly want. You have three bowls of food right there. What do you want? I think he just wants a spank. You want a spank spank? Is that all you want? Well, come over here. Is that what you want? Okay, we'll be Right here. You can't get on that one. I can't spank you on that one. You gotta get on this one. Come on. There you go. Anybody else got a cat that likes to be spanked? He's so weird. Yeah. And look at him. He'll dig in. This is his chair. He gets to tear it up. And then he just loves it. I just patty pat 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 and he just can't stand it. <laughs> he just loves it. This is our Sammy. And this is his tear up chair. He just loves it. He loves it. He loves him some spank spanks. So weird. And then Chloe up here on the painting table is saying hello. Love me. Are you doing a live of your house? I am doing a live of the kitty cats. I am. Uh, Say hello, Chloe. Just sharing. Being overly sharing, as usual. All right, guys. I'm going to get off here. Put some bread away. We made some homemade bread with the bread maker today. That's what that is. I got to put it away, though. Are you going to bite me? Really? What are you biting me for? Chloe? Yeah, bite. yeah. She's trying to correct me on something. Don't know what. But anyway, I appreciate y'all guys hanging out with me. I will see y'all again on Wednesday. Good night. Trash. Yes. James, did you take down the trash cans? No. You didn't take down the trash cans? All right. Somebody's got to come help me drag these things down. Thank you, Twinkle. Bro, this guy be just All right, message me too, Twinkle. What was going on? I don't know what. Something was. There's the social media tabs. Yes. Y'all be sure and go there. And if y'all want to know how to update your books and put notes in your books all by yourself without my help, without buying them, just go to CPT Book Prep, Wait. click on the photos. Yeah, that will tell you step by step on how to prep your own books without having to buy them from well, me. But if you want to purchase them, they're in the shop right there. Anyway, guys, I will see y'all later. See you on Wednesday. Good night. Come on, Jaybird, let's go take out the trash.